Howdy tubers, welcome back to the Zach Life. So I've got a little machine shop job today. I've got a Johnny joint. This is like a four link Heim joint in a, in a Jeep uh, that needs to be threaded. It was screwed into a, a uh, four link bar that has some crap in it and it kind of screwed the threads up here on the end and it's left handed. So you can't find a left handed die. But anyway, there's more to this story than just the, just the machine shop part. I'd like to tell you the story behind this. Uh, so this is owned by a friend of mine I went to high school with him. Uh, me and him and his wife are all really good friends. And long story short, he's blind. After I, about three or four or five years ago, he lost his vision. Not gonna get into all that, but anyway, he had something wrong with his eyes, he's blind, whatever. But anyway, he uh, when he went blind, he lost his ability, obviously, to make a living. He's an off-road nut and pretty mechanical and a Jeep nut. And he always worked at fab shops and, you know, built things for people and, you know, could weld and whatnot. And anyway, he can't do that anymore, obviously he's blind. <clears throat> so what he started doing is he's building him a little business uh, and he parts out Jeeps and he doesn't just come up with old junk. He, he comes up with some late model, um, you know, some nice stuff, the good, the good transfer cases people want, late model engines. Anyway, just doing it out of his driveway. He actually lives in Wichita Falls. Uh, but I sold him some land. He's supposed to move out here and build a shop and, and actually try to get his business rolling some more. But anyway, I wanted to do a little bit of advertising for him. You know, he didn't just lay down and give up. He's still, he's still, still trying to do it. He's doing a really good job. He'll go out there, you know, and not be able to see you. He's all looking around, feeling for crap, and he'll pull the motor out of the Jeep doing that. And, uh, and, and does a lot of them. Anyway, uh, it's uh, I'll, I'll put a link in the description for his Facebook account and, and for his YouTube deal uh, But it's it's renegade Jeeps renegade off-road something like that. His name's Ren uh, And that's where the name comes from But anyway, I want to give him a shout out if any of y'all need any Jeep parts or anything like that uh, Look him up because he's he's he could he could use the 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 business and, uh, and I think someone like him is, is, is worth going the extra mile to try to use. You know, he's not just somebody just gives up and quits. He, uh, he, he's, he's still gonna do something. Anyway, really nice guy, good guy. Um, if you need any Jeep parts, look him up. Anyway, getting back to this thing. So <clears throat> if, you, if you look at this pretty close here, the last about this much of the threads are kind of laid over. It's galled in here a little bit. And uh, anyway, we got to chase the threads on this. I took a, I think that's about a 5 8 nut and just put a couple of heavy tacks here on the inside of this. We're going to use this to hold it in the lathe. Um, this was not precisely put in here as I'll explain in a minute. But anyway, we're going to chuck up on the threads, put this in the chuck. Uh, we'll turn this a step on this, which will make this um, in the same plane as the threads here. So we'll be able to chuck, uh, chuck back up on this side. It's got a center... Uh, center already drilled in it and uh and then and then chase these threads I think I can just get that chucked up. So in the back of this thing, there's what's called a center. Uh, and this is a tapered drilled hole that's, I believe it's 60 degrees, it's a standard, whatever it is. Anyway, that's what they would have used in a machine to center to, to cut these threads and so if we if we recenter the center if we realign it uh, then we should be back straight with the uh, with the way the threads run and of course to do that we're going to use the center on this machine if we just run in here and run into it it should square it up and by putting a little bit of force in that direction that should have that thing straight eyeballing this these threads look pretty straight so hopefully this is good enough good enough to chase these threads.
So quickly, to set this machine up, a crash course on cutting threads, I need to figure out what the threads per inch is on this. I don't have a thread gauge up here, believe it or not. Let's just see if we can count them. I counted 15, I bet that's 16 threads per inch. So what we'll do is we'll come down here to this chart. We'll find 16 threads per inch, which is right here. And we'll want to put the machine in BC1, which believe it or not is actually where we're at. So we've got this, this lever here, switches A, B, this one's C, D, E, uh, and this one's 1 through 11. 16 threads per inch. We'll move this from feeds to threads, and what that'll do is take this, there's a lead screw right here, and this will kick this lead screw in, and this lead screw will now be timed with the chuck. So if we spin the chuck, you can actually see the lead screw turn. Now as the lead screw turns, it's got this little device here that's going to turn and count and give you a correlation between the timing of the carriage and the timing of this lead screw. So what we'll do is we'll, as the machine's running, this will be turning. Uh, when we get it all in time, say, get it lined up there with the three, we'll kick this in, and now the lead screw We'll pull the carriage forward. Can you see the carriage moving? Hope that makes sense. This is a pretty crash course, but I'm gonna tell you what's going on. So anyway, the thing that's more unusual about this is the fact it's left-handed thread. So as it is turning, we'll be screwing away from the chuck, not to the chuck, which makes this a little bit more difficult. Uh, to, make, to put this machine into left-handed gear, uh, this would be right-hand. You kick it up, that would be neutral and you gotta slam it up into gear and get it. It's kinda of hard, hard to get in and sometimes it tries to jump out. Uh, this being up will cause a lead screw to turn the opposite direction of the chuck, which will pull it, pull it back this way. So the first thing you've got to do, uh, I've dropped the threading tool in here. I think this will work. I've kinda of already done this, but I wanna, I wanna go over. Uh, is you have to manipulate your machine, you've got to make sure that you can get your threading tool in every place it needs to go without having a wreck. Because it's common uh, to start threading something and get almost done or almost to the end and, and basically run into something. You know, there'll be a part of the carriage will hit the, hit the tailstock or the chuck. You know, when you come up towards the chuck, the chuck will hit the carriage or the cross slide here. And anyway, so if you look at this, the, the bad threads start about right here. The bad threads are here back. So we really don't need to mess with any of this forward. And so where we're at, where I'm going to say about right there is where we need to start. And if you look down here, there's just about a quarter of an inch gap between the chuck and the compound here. Uh, and that's plenty enough. You want to make sure when you're cutting on something that's obscure like this or that's out of, you know, oblong or not round, uh, that you're not going to have any parts come out of it or it's not going to hit anything anyway i believe this is probably going to work here uh, we can actually get all the way back to about right there uh, and i'm going to probably go back as far as i can so the first thing i may actually end up doing this by hand instead of running the machine just because everything's kind of tight and weird and backwards but the first thing i'm going to do i actually missed it right there uh, we're going to look here at this dial. I'm spinning the chuck by hand, and we're going to line this up with number four. We'll close the half nut, and we'll rotate the chuck until the lead screw pulls the carriage forward. Now everything's lined up, everything's in gear, the slack has been taken out of everything. And what we'll do is we'll run the threading tool in here, and we'll see, and I don't know how well you'll be able to see this, but we'll see if it's lined up. Now it isn't, it needs to go this direction. And so how you set this up is we'll take the compound and we'll work the compound in and out along with the cross slide. The compound's at an angle. You can see it pulls it in and out at an angle. So we'll back it out a little bit, run the cross slide in. And that looks like, mm, I'm gonna say it probably needs to come out just a little bit more. And that looks dead on to me. Now, I'm gonna back this out just a little bit because we're not exactly sure that we got the right threads per inch. And we're gonna rotate the chuck. 
we're going to make sure that that stays lined up and it did not so we've got the wrong threads per inch let's try that again <laughs> let me get on my phone and figure out what this is supposed to be all right let's back this out pull it out of gear so my chart says that one inch fine thread is 12 threads per inch i don't know why i come up with with uh, 16 i'm not sure if that's right but let's just try it so we need to go to ae and number six now i'll probably have to spin the chuck to be able to do this Uh, then you've got to click this out to be able to turn the knob. We'll go to six. Throw that back in gear. And we should be correct here. Okay, so we've got to spin the chuck. Obviously, you would usually do this with a machine running, but the machine's so loud, I want to be able to talk to you as we do it. I'm kind of doing this the hard way. Uh, we'll line it up with three. Throw the half nut in. Turn it till it brings a carriage forward. And we'll start all this over. Um, so we'll come in, it needs to go towards the chuck a little bit. We'll come in with a compound. And that looks pretty close to me. So let's roll this forward. So we're again not lined up. Hang on, let me get this in the right gear. Hang on. Okay, 14 threads per inch. So I've got it in gear. Uh, we turn it till the carriage is full forward. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to line the tool up with the threads. And that looks pretty good. We're going to do the same thing now. We're going to roll this thing forward and make sure that it stays lined up. All right, I believe that it is. Okay, so we're gonna run in here. We're gonna run the tool in it until it hits bottom. Hits the bottom of the threads, and that's probably where we need to end up. I'm going to zero out our handle here. Okay, I'm gonna try to do this by hand. I'm not sure if it'll work. Obviously, usually you do this with a machine running. Okay, so we're going to turn it until it pulls a carriage forward. We're going to dive into the threads, turn it to zero, plus maybe about six or something. And let's see if I can turn this by hand. Something like that. Let's see if it'll go. And the answer is no. Well, maybe. Look there. A lot of times when you cut threads, they will have kind of tight spots like that. And you generally can take and tap on, tap on the nut and it will straighten the threads up just like that. That's what we want. Okay, so I brought this back to my home shop here. Washed it off in the parts washer. Got all the, all the burrs and stuff, all the dingleberries off of it. Uh, took a cutoff wheel, cut the tack loose. Now this isn't the prettiest deal. He can spray some gold paint on it if he didn't like it. Uh, you can see there's a couple of threads that started to pull off here, you know, when this when this happened. Uh, but there's less than probably one thread gone. These threads look really good. They were laid over just a little bit. Uh, the material is sort of pushed in. Uh, and that's what we cut back out. So they're not quite full threads, but they're 90% of the, of the thread is there. Uh, it, it'll be plenty strong. There won't be any, any effective loss of strength here. 
uh, <laughs> I can't do this left-handed. Um, threads are smooth as silk, which is what we wanted. Can't uh, can't beat that for a you know 30 minute fix. Well, tubers, that's about it. I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you need any Jeep parts, look him up. He he moves a lot more parts than you think. Somebody that's blind, it sits uh, this does them out of his driveway. He uh, <laughs> he comes up with a bunch of stuff, transfer cases, rear ends, whatever. Anyway, I'm not selling parts for him. If if you want anything, go look him up. Anyway, check out his channel too. He's got a he's got some neat stuff. Him and his wife are both full blown Jeep nuts. They're off road nuts. Uh, they go they go a lot of cool places, do a lot of neat things, and. Uh, Anyway, like I say, if you need Jeep parts, look him up. He's a, he's a good guy. He's a good kind of guy to support. He's trying to make a living just like everybody else. And, uh, you know, sometimes life deals you things that makes it a little bit harder. And he's, uh, he's making the best of it for sure. Anyway, appreciate you watching. Hope you learned something. Hope I'm not too boring. Like, share, subscribe, all them good things. And uh, we'll catch you on the next one.